Thank you so much for introduction and it's a pleasure for me to be here with you all because uh, it's my first time uh, to present in this uh, global conference, which is a matter of prestige for me. And I really love to be here with you all. So uh, today, uh, what I just wanting to share with you is about the creation and integration of MOOCs. MOOCs, as we all know that uh, what it stands for and uh, what is its importance in the present scenario. It is, I think, the uh, one of the most favorable and wanted, uh, uh, you can say, the course which is working throughout the globe, especially in this time of pandemic. So. I just want to give some con conceptualization regarding uh, my presentation for that I would take you to the presentation part and uh, I would share with you that what this uh, is all about. Now you can see here in the screen that it says uh, creating and integrating MOOCs in blended learning. I asked my 11 years old daughter, sixth grader, uh, to, to make something, to draw for me something, what she perceives from MOOC, and this is here right in front, what she made. So isn't this interesting? What she perceived is that the MOOC is something which is benefiting people all over the globe and people can and learn through this these moves they can use these moves and they can learn through these moves so it's interesting that even the small uh, kids the kids the the adults and everybody is considering moves important so uh, once again welcome to you all in the in this workshop where we would share about three important things the process the software tools and the platform for MOOCs. Because these are something that depends on OER's open education resources. And MOOCs are available to everyone throughout the globe. And we as teacher educators are working in this direction that we can create MOOCs to educate people, not only in the areas where we are in, but to the whole club, whatever specialities, whatever uh, skills we have, we just are trying to share that. So thanks to the technology where we can really take our notes on global standards. Here the process, when we talk about process, because uh, uh, being a teacher educator coming from the pedagogy path, I just want to talk about the pedagogy also, because a teacher nowadays, an educator nowadays, have to have the technology, the pedagogy and the content knowledge. All three are very important. It's not only the content knowledge that's going to uh, keep uh, us safe, the educators and teachers, but also the technology and the, the pedagogy that has to be there while preparing the MOOCs or other e-contents that we use as e OER. So we talk about process, we talk about software tools involved because we need some tools for the development of MOOCs and then the platforms where we can launch our MOOCs. So very uh, soon I would go through this, the process here, the instructional design, what I have used is ADI and ADI is the most popular one because the other derivatives of the models on which we have our instructional designs are all you can say variants of ADI and the five important steps as ADDI stands for is analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation. So we see first of all here in this uh, section, the process, the five steps involved in instructional design, then in software tools, we see the various resources where, where we can have uh, uh, the contents for OER right from image to authoring tools and the various platforms. So just I want uh, you to lend your ears, uh, especially to this session, because uh, we need uh, this to understand and follow the workshop. Then the first part is very important Important that of the process where we talk about analysis. We analyze when we create MOOC. Before that, we need to know the needs of the learners. So th this analysis part is very important because the entire program would depend on the need content and learners requirement, context, etc. So this is a very important part. 
So we analyze all this. In the second uh, dimension of the instructional design, we talk about the design. And here we have design as um, in context of constructional strategy, visual strategy, then the technical aspects and prototype. So when we talk about instructional strategy of developing MOOC, we say that uh, it is about, uh, you can say, the uh, setting our learning objectives, structuring our content, deciding the learning strategy and evaluation. So this is very important. Then in the visual part, we talk about the GUI. If we want to develop the website, like I take the free website that is Google Sites, most wonderful one, where you just can uh, don't have to do anything but as a free resource you just have to design the layouts the fonts and the topics and the subjects and your website is ready but when you have to have your website then definitely you have to design for GUI, its fonts, its layouts, and the various subtopics. Then we talk about the technical aspect of it, where we follow our technical aspects, and then the prototype where we have a beta version. So this is very important to understand why we develop as educators, teachers, or professional are MOOCs. Then the development part, definitely you have perceived everything about what your course gonna be, how you're going to develop a MOOC. Then comes the story building. Like the storyboard is very important for we the teachers. We have been planning all the time, preparing the lessons and just finding out the contents related to that um, content. So this story building is very important. Production, preview, metadata, delivery, and then the documentation. Uh, doc documentation of everything. These days, documentation has become very important because uh, the people, the administrators, the governments, and everybody asks for documentation, what you have been doing, how you have done this. So this documentation part is very important. And then we talk about the implementation, how the created MOOC whatever you have created is uh, going to be there how it would look like so for that you have a field testing you test it in the field with uh, like i do it with my small group of students and when i have success in that i launch it to other platforms so this is very important that you do lots of field testing then production compliance then certification we know that when we talk about certification the moves that are for uh, oer we have uh, it we distribute it under common creative license. This licensing part is very important when we have become the global natives. We have to know and we have to have the knowledge of what these licenses are. What is mine and what is Marion's? What is somebody else's? So we have to attribute, we have to appreciate the contributions and collaboratively we can do that. So certification part is important and the Creative Commons, various uh, type of certificates are there. You, uh, the uh, simple attributions are there, the non-commercial, then share alike, then non-derivatives, and then the variants of these uh, uh, licensing parts. So, and then we release our content under the license. So if I made a uh, say Google site, because I take the example of the free resource, I just put the certification of what I have really certified it for. So I put that uh, certification and I release uh, my MOOC under that license. Then uh, comes uh, the testing part, you test it and later uh, then you have the feedback evaluation this evaluation part is very important when you have tested uh, everything you take the feedback regarding your content that how it looks like or what are the shortcomings or what is working what not so that is the development collection and utilization you develop the strategy together and collect uh, the the feedback you implemented and then you again redesign and you again this is how you can run your courses so as an individual teacher educator or researcher we can do this so you have perceived everything about your MOOCs your designs are ready now you have to have something for e-contents and we know that to prepare proper e-contents we want uh, some images text audio some bookmarking videos animation graphics and authoring tools there are a number of websites open resources which gives us the permission to use the images text audio videos, animations, and so on to prepare our own uh, 
creative MOOC. Then uh, the uh, these are the examples you can see like image i have taken the various examples which i would do this with mind master because there i would show it to you how we can reach mind master i have it is a e-drawing tool where we can ideate what we have to present and i have shared the presentation and this uh, 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 the, the conceptualization to mind master on eo connect so if you're interested you can go through and visit that uh, after the presentation also so this things will stay with you i'm not going to discuss so you can see the various uh, uh, the things being used here and the images the the other side the left side are the sources then the text you can see which the the common presentation tools i have used google slide google docs are very important because they have the shareable features we can do everything on uh, uh, internet and that can reach the globe to the maximum people there the big number can access your uh, text and presentations then these are uh, the various other tools for Audacity, audio experts, speaker, because podcast are also very important. We know that the internet, uh, internet uh, uh, facility and the connectivity is different in different parts of the globe. So we have to keep in mind that also uh, connecting and disconnecting is a, a common feature. And we have to live with it because not all the parts of the globe can have a very easy access. So while developing OER, we have to keep this in mind that what is the scenario, what are the conditions of internet facilities there. And uh, that is why you can sometimes go to videos, sometimes uh, audios, and you can make impressive podcast using Audacity Audio Expert and Spreaker, and you can add it, your own audio files. So I personally use a Spreaker, which gives me a very user-friendly interface to make my MOOCs. And then we have the other part, the sources, free sources for bookmarking, then we have videos and videos, Looms, OBS, Headliner and ClipChamp. And I was watching Alan's um, introductory video about uh, the interface of the OE Connect. He has used Loom there. So people are using Loom because it's very user friendly. And in today's workshop, we'll be talking about OBS, that how all multimedia features can be used through OBS to connect the videos in no time. Definitely, the technology involved uh, needs little time to grow with it, to learn and to uh, assimilate the same. But as we keep on doing, the things become easy for us. The headliner or clip champ are, you know, I have visited them recently, find them very interesting because most of the work is being done through Androids. And for Androids, you need uh, to get connected to the people, to the globe uh, in no time. You need to have some important and trusting videos for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and it permits you all for YouTube as well. So you can use all these free platforms for making your own videos, which are most wanted e-content and very uh, explanatory and easy to use. People and students love to see videos because it's very engaging. So if you can make it interesting, I think it would benefit students a lot. So moving to the uh, next part is animation. Now, how do we do animation? Animation is also very interesting. If you have small kids, even uh, I as uh, an adult uh, love animation and there are so many things in education we could be, uh, which could be explained very well through animation. So I personally use animation and I use Render Forest and all the, uh, you know, the sources mentioned here, we know that every source has its free version and a paid version. So you you can always try with the free version and if you're satisfied as an educator you can use it for making your own open content you can buy we as educators can buy and purchase some good um, tools to give a great MOOC to others and then we have graphics i don't do much with graphics because i get it uh, at the other places and then authoring these days uh, is very important because we as teachers have no time Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, you, you just uh, disconnect. So uh, your screen is uh, 
all online. So appreciate again. Yeah, so I'm just joining uh, from the browser again, joining and we would uh, continue from there. So here I was just talking about the platforms. I can continue with that uh, till my laptop get connected. And if you want, I can stop or shall I continue? Existe a problems de connection? Yeah, I didn't hear vo your voice, so we have to on my Okay. Just a minute. Let me share the screen. Yes, so uh, we have already talked about various uh, platforms and uh, we have been uh, talking about the Blogger, ZX, Moodle. We had all the sessions related to this uh, early in the morning here. It was morning here in India. So we had all the sessions and uh, the sessions were very interesting. Uh, and as I work on innovative MOOC as teachers, we find, uh, you know, various ways to get connected to uh, our students and that is uh, very important because uh, here we, uh, you know, have to uh, see like uh, uh, what platforms are uh, available for us uh, very you know easily the easy access because when we talk about open education it is also about easy access of the same that is very important so i think that uh, that should be there and uh, we should always keep this in mind the accessibility part the desirability of the content that is very important and that is why i have made this mind map you can see this mind map here and uh, the important uh, you know the components of this is uh, let me tell you the development and creation of mooc here and as I have already talked about the two things, I would go to the software pass where I want to show this to you. This is also one of the platform which I innovatively use to take the MOOCs to the students. And I share this uh, mind maps or uh, the ad draws with my students and they can access everything through these uh, only. Now, the, as you see the software part here, the softwares, I told you that these are the resources, the unsplash part. These are the examples where you can see this, the uh, unsplash. And as I click on the link, you get to unsplash or when I click on the note, this is a small icon for note here, you would say,
Dr. Roma, you lost your connection again. <laughs> The so as we can see here, the various platforms uh, for Splash, I click here, I take uh, to the link and as I click on the link, which you can see on the screen, it would take you directly to the site that is Unsplash and you can see it here. The pictures, so images are free. We as teachers and educators can use these images, giving attribute and thanks to the provider here, although they don't expect it is free uh, of uh, the licensing, but it is always good and required that you attribute them, you appreciate their hard work done. If I want something to be done for nature, here I just uh, select nature and I go for it here, and it would give me the available searches for nature. Here you can see the beautiful pictures related to the nature here. Is it this? So you can just add uh, uh, this thing. Uh, load uh, download any of the pictures you click on the download pad and it has been uh, clicked by nicola nicola has uh, this picture here on unsplash and has provided us for free as you download it ask you to thank to donate or to attribute to the learner say thank to the provider and you can follow him on his social media as well so this is important what we can do here and uh, this is how we can follow mind map. Fine. And now again, going back to the mind map here, you can see the sources as I click them, you can see the bigger sources here. See the burst here. Then you see, just click, you click on the link, you get the uh, uh, website to go to, then Pixabay, free images are all here. Then you have the Google Slides here. You can talk about Google Slides. I would show this to you later if we have time. Just sharing with you Google Docs, everybody knows how to make uh, the use of the audio tools, Audacity, Spreaker and all, and Loom. Now I come to the OBS. That is the major part of our section today. And that is about OBS. OBS is about open broadcasting system fine so uh, i go back uh, again to uh, the part where i share my whole screen with you i stop sharing i again go back to the sharing part and i again share with you the screen with you here and this would take us to OBS. Now you can see if any problem, please maybe and connect with us. Now going to OBS, I have already put this in Global Connect that if you are interested, you can download OBS in order to practice this with me and we can discuss and learn collaboratively. It's not something new I'm sharing with you, but definitely as an educator, what are problems I came across, problems uh, I just, uh, you know, came across in understanding the various uh, software tools and platforms that I am trying to share with you. So you can download OBS from here. You just have to search for open broadcasting system that is OBS and you come to this page. It will take you to the home page. You have to go to the second tab that is about download and here you can download it. You can see a download installer and you download it. You can download it uh, uh, from here. And once it is downloaded, you come to this interface, right? So this is the interface you have for OBS. And now let me play something. That's how what I am sharing, how I have made it on an open resource that is open broadcasting system. Here you can use all the multimedia features for educators who are not very techno savvy. I've learned this by doing. I'm not a technologist. I'm not somebody who is very good in technology. But I think learning uh, and doing 
doing makes us perfect. I've been doing this for quite a time. And I think that has given me a little understanding of how we can really do things easier. And uh, many times when you go to the YouTubes also, uh, we, uh, I, uh, I can talk about myself, uh, did not come across a video which can really tell me about the very delicate things which I as a teacher educator do not understand about technology. So here I made a little introductory video of myself. Just watch it on OBS. So welcome to the MOOC workshop, and this is the workshop where I'm going to share about the development and creation of e-content, the process software and platforms. And we can see that the process involves five steps. The software talks about image to authoring tools, and then we talk about the blogs and the mind master. So thank you very much. So you just saw that how we are using this uh, platform in creating the MOOCs. Now, what you, what I do is like, you know, I can take this uh, down here, right from the MOOC here. I just will uh, tell you about the interface, what uh, the important thing is about interface in OBS and how we can make small videos, small presentations, slide shares, et cetera. Here you can see the files. This is the interface right from the top up, uh, left corner you can see file the various options available in this here what you have to do you have to uh, be uh, understood of the show recordings part because this is the place where you can see your uh, stuff after recording your uh, entire uh, components here your uh, content here We have both here again. Okay, from here, and I hope all of you Yes, so as we have already discussed about the interface, the very important thing thing lies at the left of the screen where you can find all the options then the second part is here the sources the first you can see that of scenes the second is of sources and the extreme left side this uh, to my right are the controls so these are something you have to keep in mind while uh, doing this and uh, these are the sources because uh, this will give you the idea of what sources you want to use while creating your own MOOC or your program. So this is important where you can uh, see the resources. And uh, I would click this. I just make uh, this, uh, you know, empty here. So if you want to uh, remove any resource here, you select the source and you click. It asks you, are you sure you wish to remove this? And I say yes. Fine. And then the second source, I select this and I again share this and I remove this from the screen. Now you see that the entire part you see here has nothing, no contents available in this part. Fine. So uh, here what we do now see that what uh, way OBS works you can have all these sources with you right starting from the top we have audio input capture which would help you 
to put your audio, then the audio output capture also you can have. You can have anything from any browser to show, to live stream, to make your own videos. You have the color source, the beautiful backgrounds you can put using color source. Then the display picture, what picture display capture, what you want to display from the monitor, from your screen. You have a game capture, which is very important and in work these days. And then we simply can capture the images to make our very simple um, starting videos and impressive videos. And then we have image slideshow. We as teachers uh, find this very important because just within no time, we can convert our slideshows into videos and can share it with teachers, with voiceovers, with other effects, with music and all that stuff. Then this is a media source where you can use the media from your file, whether it is in the form of audio or video or uh, anything you have as a media. So here you can create scenes, you can write, just see at the left side of this board I'm moving my cursor so that you can see it. And here, these are the scenes where I have created a number of scenes. And in order to record, I just keep on shuffling from one to the other scene or to, to uh, the first scene to the last scene. And this is how I can do this here. Then we have uh, the text part of it. We can add text to what we make. The stuff text, as I shared, you, is very important. We had a video capture device. Then we have video ca window capture and all that. So this is uh, very important that uh, we have to have some knowledge about the stuff. Now, let me say that I just want to have an image. I want to add an image to this interface where I can use it. OK, so I just take this image here. This image asks you to create new one. OK, fine. I want to create a new one. Or you can have the existing image, add existing image. Now, as I go to the create image, as I click on create and click on the OK button, it would take you to the file as we do on the other interface. And the time when we have to upload the stuff, you just click on it. It would take you to that file. I would show you that also. Just to save time, let me take you to the existing image if you already have existing because I have made so many images here add existing image and I can add any of this image say I want to add image three so I just select it here if it is there then I just click on it and we can see that there appears an image on the screen. Now what? See that the screen is right at the back, whereas your slide is at one side only. You can drag it this way, just dragging the red corners, but you see that the picture is extending. Then again, you have to make it small and a whole lot of stuff. So what you do, you just click here, right? Go to the transform part of this options available here. Then just look down for the option that is fit to screen. You can just fit it to screen or you can stretch to screen, hit it here, stretch to screen. And you see that your image is here on the screen. So this is always good to set your image right at the start. Now, if I want to add my picture here, say my video also here with this, I just click on the plus button and then I go to the video, the camera device here. That is the video capture device. Now, as you click on on the video capture device, it asks you to create a new one or it asks you to add existing one. I don't have ex existing device because the same image uh, part is uh, the camera is being used here in Zoom. So I just would show you that what option does it have. So if the mic is here, the, the video is here, you can create a new one, click here on create new and it would give you the options here. You can see that it has got the camera of my uh, micro uh, that is live cam studio I have by this name and you can see me here. So the same camera which I'm using in Zoom here is lift 
by this um, OBS studio, which I'm not going to use. And I just would keep it to OBS. If I take OBS camera here and I start the OBS camera, then I can stream live from OBS studio on the Zoom. And you would see all that I'm doing in Zoom, uh, in OBS on Zoom. For that, I have to, if, if I select this OBS camera here, like this, you know, I just have to go to the tools and I'm just telling you for your purpose to show, you go to the virtual camera here. And as you hit the virtual camera, it would ask you to start the recording, which I'm not doing, but as you start the entire session of OBS would be live streamed in Zoom. I have a single camera, I'm not doing that. So again, going back to the camera options, I'm not taking any of the cameras because it's working in Zoom right now. And I just click on say, okay, here. So like you can see this here, now the empty screen. Here, I had it been a microphone camera, then you would have definitely seen how does it look like. So I just uh, take this back and I remove this picture, which uh, in the last of the session, I would take a chance to use that. Uh, we can do it with the other mic, mic as well. Now the third important thing, what you can have here is the audio input. You can select your audio from here. You hit on audio and you can capture the what audio device you want. You can hit the audio here. Then going to the browser part, you can have the browser here, whatever browser you want, like here. As I go to the browser, you can say if I have any uh, existing browser URL, it would have showed it to me here, but I just have the no browser. So I click on create and I click on OK. And here by default, it has, uh, you can say OBS uh, project as uh, the URL. What we can do, we just go to our uh, website and I uh, select that of, uh, say, the speaker URL here and I copy it here and I give it here. I paste it here. And I hit OK. So you can see here the picture appearing that of Spreaker, a tool that from which you can have your podcast done. And this is how you can again go to the options available. You can adjust it in the screen. You can adjust it in the center. And if you want, see how you can uh, block this image. Image is also visible right at the back. So uh, once you want to have something recorded through your browser, you can select the browsers here. And you can make, keep on making scenes that I would share uh, later with you. So here is the browser working. And if you want to hide the image, you can click on the eye that is you have closed the view. Now there is nothing to be viewed right at the back. So what you can do, you can just put a color source, which would look good because it doesn't look nice. And in case you just want to fit to the screen many times, you have to put the background, you can put a good background here it asks you to select the color if you know the number you can put the number or you can simply select the color you click on the color path and you click on any good uh, background this comes right in front and i just click this and i click on okay now oops where the diagram has gone 
Now, the important thing to keep here in mind is the sequence of the sources which are here present. What do you do if I want that image should come up or the browser should come up because we are talking about the browser? You click on the browser and here are the keys, the up key and the down key. So as you click on the up key, you can see the browser here coming up. This is very important, mind it. Whatever you do here, sequence is very important, whatever is there up. So if you want to move anything, any um, source up, you just have to click on it and you move it up and up again or you move it down and down again so we just talk about the browser here and we have seen what the browser can do we just click on uh, the browser and we remove this so we remove it from here this is the color source and we can put again the image here and you can see that there is the image and we click on OK. And we have the color source, which again, we can remove or we can do this here. So this was the image, the color source, the browser. Then we come to the media source here. The media source, whatever we want to take from the screen. And let me show you to create one from here. Now the create one, I just click here on it. It uh, takes me to the browser. Here you can see the browser. If I want to uh, click on the any media source that is present in the files here, uh, it will take me to the local file. And I click on the browser part here. I click on browser. And this would open the files and folders where I have different stuff. And I go to my location, the file location where I have uh, saved my media files. And let me find for one whether I can get, get one. Okay, it's here, a video one. And I open this here. So you can see my video here on the screen and it's a small video. So what do you do if you want to make it run again and again file that you want to have it on the screen for the longer period because the file is short and you can select on this loop. And as I loop it now it again, you know, continues playing here. You can see me on the screen here and I drag it again from the corners so that the aspect ratio is not disturbed and I can transform it again to the screen. So this is how you can see the video playing and this serves as one of the source. This is very important so you can uh, add it here as a scene. I do it here but how you want to take the things to make the scene here and these are the sources. So we have two sources here that the image source is already logged. You can open the image and you just want to shuffle from one to the other. You can change the sequence. So you can say that, okay, fine. How this is Dr. Omar Smart Joseph and whatever it is and uh, the stuff. And then you can switch to the image here. So, oh, well, you can switch to the image and then you can do the recording part. Again, if you want to show the image, you just bring this media source up. So this is how you can play with the resources and you can make a powerful video here. Then uh, let me see some other resources we have covered, the color source, the audio, the video, the display capture. Display capture displays the entire uh, screen of yours, which uh, you want to display. And it would show you the number of windows. So once you hit display capture, it appears something like this. So you just don't uh, get, uh, you know, troubled that, oops, what happened and why there are so many windows and windows and windows and infinite number of windows you can see. This shows that, yes, now your window is right at display and you can share anything from the display window. And here you uh, get the primary monitor at ask or the other URL, whatever you want to display, you can put it here and you click on OK. So this is how wherever you go, 
okay to in in the screen that is displayed here i can click on creating and integrating MOOCs, which is here on uh, global connect you can see that you can see some other stuff which uh, i'm doing here so what we do we again you know select the resource we hit on the minus icon and we remove the source again you can see this uh, video image here and i lock this from this vision the eye as i close the eye you have this media source here the image and i can again lock it so it depends on what you want to show on the screen what you want to record on the screen still i'm talking about the resources and the thing stuff you can do with uh, the uh, OBS. Then we have the scenes. We come to this later on. We have the video capture device here. We have talked about the window capture window would allow you to capture like the display monitor, just the window. A particular window can be captured. So a window capture, if you want to capture a window at the time of the streaming, you can just do this. Now let us come to the scene creating path. Okay, we then do the text also there and or, or let me show you the text. If I want to write down something on this image, I click on text and uh, click on test. There are some text already available, but I want to create a new text. You can always name uh, the text here, test text or whatever you just uh, name so that you can easily identify one and i type in here something okay so you can see i think i have tried hello friends you can see it on screen and here you can see the font here is the option to select the font from this part and you can see quite a, a number of fonts here that what we have been doing and you can select any font from here for example that is uh say times near roman and uh it's gonna be say 36 and we click on okay Fine. So now you can see as I click on OK, you can find it here right at the top of the screen that says hello friends. Yeah. And now if you want to make it big on the screen, you can just stretch it like this and you place it wherever you want. Okay. And you can always change the colors from the options given. Uh, the important thing, what I am trying to share here with you regarding the text, you can make your videos interesting doing that, is this, uh, you know, when there is a red tab or the red uh, border, it shows that, yes, you can avail the options required. You can go to the options from here, or you can select the text from here, and then you can click the right uh, button, and you can find out the options. So once you click here, you... Uh, go to the filters of the text and oh there's nothing so either you shift the screen upwards or what you do you again click the right button and a small ad appears on the people otherwise sometimes we keep on finding out oh my goodness where the options are what do i do what do i need to do so just a simple right click click on add and it would give you the various options here and there is an interesting option which i find that of scroll and I hit on OK because I want to scroll the text right. You see on the news channels and the other channels where your text keep rolling. And from here, you can have it a vertical version or a horizontal version, and you can control the speed. So if I want to scroll my text here, hello, friends. I can regulate the speed from here. If I want to move it faster, that too could be done. And if I want to make it slow, you just have to adjust the tabs. If you want to take it to the other side, you want to show the movement on the other side, you can do it like this as well. So I just move it here, little here and here. You can see the text scrolling now. You can see the text scrolling on the board. So this is how you can have various text features as well. And uh, we block it. 
we are just watching the image now. Now, what I was just wanting to share with you, one of the very, very important options for we the teachers is that is image slide show. And you would find it with a great difficulty how to make uh, the, the slide shows into videos using some open resource, that too with perfection. So if you want to make, I would say I want to make the video of this presentation as I've done and uploaded it on YouTube and have shared with you friends there on Connect. You can go through that, how we can make the slideshow videos here. Click on image slideshow. Here you click on it and I want to have the image slideshow too. I have image slideshow already one uh, here image slideshow. You can uh, check it out here. If I uh, check this option, add existing one, it would show that to you. But I just want to show uh, friends that how it is done. Image slideshow is one of the most important features which we could avail on OBS to make our own slides. Here you can see. Fine. Now, you know, understanding the interface, you can just see this here. Some of the very important features I would like to talk about and I have learned with experience is that when we do it for the first time, what do we do? We just, um, uh, you know, there is loop which is already uh, selected. We don't want our slide shares to be in loop. So I deselect it and uh, I, you know, just uh, go here down you won't see but there is a faded gray line to scroll down and up so maybe at once you uh, you know miss it so you go down and as you scroll down in this interface you come across image files yeah one thing very important to notice is that your slide share it has to be uh, you know converted to the image part how you would uh, convert it to the image and that is very important when you go to the powerpoint you just uh, click on your PowerPoint and in, when you click the save option of the files, it asks you to share, uh, save it in various uh, op uh, this thing formats. And you can go for the JPG or some other PNG formats or some other image formats which are compatible with the interface. So you can always uh, convert your PowerPoints. This I hit here to upload some of the files, you, multiple images you can add from here click on add files and this would take you to the files you already have here on your monitor and I just recall the files which I have kept here for uh, the presentation purpose and here you can see the OE conference folder which has the pictures for me so what do I do I just uh, select some pictures say the floral photo frame I just have this uh, images, slides here. You can name them some images in random so that I can show you how you can make your presentations creating MOOCs here and one and like this many more. So I just open this. I open the files. Now you can see all the three addresses. The picture appear here like this to you. Again, it is out of your area. So what you do, you can just simply go to the transform and you can stretch it to screen. Now you can see all the three slides here. The interesting thing, dear friends here, to remember is that how the slides are moving itself. But we don't want the slides moving on their own when we do the slides here. So what we do when we click on the image slide part here, again, you can see that slide mode is automatic. It is set to automatic. You click on the option and you go to the manual option. These are the changes which you have to do regarding the slide share. Now you click on this manual option and click on OK. 
Now, the second thing is how you are going to operate this manually. This is an important question which you have to keep in mind. Now, there are two ways. You just go to the file up here, right corner, left corner. There is option for file. When you click on it, you come across the option that is for setting. You hit on it or you have it at the extreme right corner. Here also, control, the start streaming, start recording, studio mode, settings. So as you hit on setting here, the settings open. You can see the settings here and there are the various provisions of streaming, output, audio, video, hotkeys. You can always regulate all the features from here. I go to the hotkeys here and you can find out all the options here available from here. Let me scroll down and shift the zoom room somewhere else. So you can see the various options. Let me see for the start streaming, slides so here, presentation, and you can the intro video, all the resources I have, it would be seen here. Just keep on scrolling down till you come to your own slide share. So this is say slide share show. Now the slide share here and the slide share show here. The slide share two, if it is, I just go and I just type something say backspace for the next slide and here uh, it's like uh, fine so it's working here we can give it uh, the enter and the back space so the next slide can be you know operated by pressing enter and the previous slide by backspace so we just have saved this here you can scroll down as well and you can just show this let me show you the various options there here you can say and we can apply it here you can again for going you can check here next enter and backspace and you can switch on apply so you can now click. Now you have closed the window. Now you say that the files are moving only when I press enter here, fine. Now we need to do some uh, editing here because we want that uh, the first uh, slide here should be that of the image, the welcome slide. So what we do, we just select on this slide, the image slide, and we put it here. Or we just can go to the text part or the slide show up here. Can move it from here. Now, if you want to check the sequence, you at any type, you have to double click this image slide show too. As you click here on it and go back to your slides, you can very well shuffle the sequence of slides from here. Now, if I want this photo frame to be there first, I select this and I move it up. So now this becomes my first slide. Then I want this move final to follow the first slide. I select it and I again click on this move slide. This moves up. So this is say our final sequence. I close on a hit on okay. Fine. There are some other images as well, which I want not to be shown for this. And I close those image now. This is the first uh, say, uh, slide where we want to write welcome friends or the name of the presentations and you can put a background here from the color source and you can go to the color source here if the uh, the aspect ratio is different for you you want to have it on the screen and i go for 
the different colors. I select a color, hit on OK, and I then put OK. Then again, I just want to see the slides here up. I again select it and click on this move button. So now you can see a pretty background and the first slide where you can make and you can put the text here. You just hit on text, there's a text uh, here button. You just uh, click here and uh, you hit on uh, text and uh, you write welcome, okay? So as you write welcome, it would come here, you select the font just doing it fast, uh, say it's here, you click on it. So you can do all these uh, things later on. And you can see a small text here, which is there. And because it is right, I'm keeping it here. You can change the color and you can put it right at uh, center if you want to do it just now. We just click the text here and you would find the various options, say option for the color, and I hit on red. So don't worry, you can switch in any point in time to make the corrections, to make the videos here, and you can do that very well. It would take a little time, but uh, it is all done and you can shift it the way you want, or you can scroll and you can take it here. You can put some other text here right at the center by doing the same thing. And you can, again, go to the next slide, which uh, I told you would be done manually here like this. This is the MOOC and here you can do this. Welcome is here. If you don't want to have welcome for this, that too can be uh, logged. You know, we do it like this way. We can just click on the eye and it won't be present. And if you click on the interface outside the picture, this red uh, would also disappear. So you can stretch it and you can shift it to the part you want. You can adjust it accordingly so that it is stretched to screen. And this is how you can see that all the red frame is now here on screen and it captures your screen. And I hit again, enter, and it take me to the PowerPoint. So you using backspace, you go back. Now the important thing is here, uh, just uh, a little uh, time left. I think it's pretty 12.30, it gets over, but let's let me tell you the important part now. The two important part which I want to show is how to record your re uh, uh, this thing uh, video and how to live live stream it to uh, the YouTube. That is very important as an educator, as a MOOC developers. You need to fix your live streaming classes. You need to interact with it. And if uh, it is the uh, the people when you don't have the paid versions of uh, the Zoom or that of uh, the Google Meet that won't allow many people to attend the meeting or your presentation, you can always go for live streaming. So for we the educators, live streaming part is very important. How you live stream with OBS or using uh, the YouTube, right? So we go to the recording part. I want to do the recording here. So I hit the recording button here. Or if you want, you know, if you want to uh, uh, use uh, music out there or the mic out there, that also can be recorded. And uh, that also could be done. So I just click on this recording part here. My recorder is engaged in uh, Zoom right now. We will do it later. I would post the videos for you and uh, you can always avail those videos later and uh, you know I just want to have a uh, good music playing and uh, that is the important stuff because uh, you know that makes the videos peppy engaging and interesting media source again and from media source I go to the file where I have saved the video I browse uh, again for some uh, video source and there is chapel music here I I open it and now I click on OK and uh, you know you can see it here. Now, but this video is not um, uh, you know, visual. You can say that uh, if this is a media source too, this is the media source here. You can see right at the center, you have the option to you know set the sounds. Here you can say the desktop audio, which is not working, the media source 
free audio is working and there are the various media here so uh, when you click on it here are the settings you can see see i'm just uh, moving my cursor so that you can see this audio mixer part right at the center this is also very important now you would wonder why you are not able to hear the sound you are playing. This is all because the audio mixture settings, audio uh, are different. So what do we do for media resource? We find the media resource here on the media uh, audio source and we click on settings. As we click on settings, we come across the advanced audio properties. We click here, advanced audio properties. And now you can see the sources here on the board. Now this is the setting for media source and you can say that the monitor is off and when the monitor is off, you cannot hear the sound. So you just click on the monitor only and if you want it as an output, you have monitor and output. So you select monitor only here and you close. Just little echo will be there. I would closing this in a little while after showing that to you. Now, next, here. So when you want the recording, the echo would show you that this is your media source has to be right at the top. You can take it to the top. All the media source need to be at the top. And I again make it mute. You can hear the media source as uh, if the we have different mics. Later on, you can see it yourself. So I just log this. Now again, what I have to do is change the source here. It has lot of echo. This is the media source, and 